everyone welcome to weather on the go hope everybody's having a great tuesday june 14th out there here um uh, welcome to tuesday morning to my new weather forecast video here today we got a lot to get to again in this video we got severe weather continuing all the way through this thursday and possibly into friday and then we also have another heat wave a major heat wave at that becoming reestablished across the middle of the country heading into this weekend father's day weekend and into uh this coming week into next week and then we also have the tropics that are really starting to heat up as well so we'll get to all of that here in this video now looking back here to yesterday on monday june 13th we did have a lot of severe weather reports across the northern plains and then especially the southern great lakes through the ohio valley and into the mid-atlantic where we had several clusters of thunderstorms dive across south uh, southern Mi lake michigan across lower Michigan there and through Indiana, Ohio, getting down into portions there of West Virginia. At last check here, uh, before I did go to bed last night, uh, the, um, the uh the power outages across portions of Oklahoma, uh, ohio there were actually over 350,000 customers without power so still a lot of power here to be restored a significant amount of power outages across portions there of west virginia indiana michigan and even illinois as a tornado warn storm was warned around the chicagoland area um, however there was no tornado reports here uh, on monday there was 216 wind reports five of those significant 44 hail reports nine of those significant with a two 260 total reports across the United States from your Monday for severe weather in total. As we head through the day today, there are three separate areas I'm keeping an eye on here for severe weather. The uh, first area across portions of northwestern Minnesota getting into the eastern North Dakotas. Also here into portions of far southern Minnesota getting in through much of Iowa, eastern and central portions there in Nebraska, far southeastern South Dakota as well. And then another area across the mid-Atlantic here and toward the southeast where we have portions of eastern North Carolina up through eastern Virginia, southern Maryland and southern portions there of, uh, you know, Delaware as we head into your uh, the day today. And then you have that marginal rest that extends across portions of the mid-Atlantic getting down towards, you know, Georgia, portions of South Carolina, eastern uh, Alabama, and then another marginal risk across the UP of Michigan through much of Wisconsin, and then getting down towards the Central Plains. As we head through the day as well, we have a lot of heat to work with. So kind of on the northern periphery of all this, we'll have that storm activity here as that storm track is still to the north above this ridge. But underneath that ridge, we'll have a lot of temperatures rising into the 90s, lower 100s again. We got a cold front incoming here from portions of the no uh, northern plains moving into the Midwest here this afternoon. And it'll kind of slow and stall as it does so across portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and back into portions of Kansas as well. Uh, but ahead of that cold front, you could definitely see a lot of dew points rising well into the 60s, some low to mid 70s, maybe a locally up to near 80 degree dew points across the Ohio Valley as we head through today. And that will uh, yield some high uh, keep values, uh, convective available potential energy, you know, those high instability values approaching or exceeding 5,000 joules per kilogram here from eastern Indiana through southwestern Ohio, getting into the mid Atlantic. Still some high values along that cold front here across the mid, uh, you know, the Midwestern regions, getting down toward the central plains into those yellows and reds where we have 3,000 to nearly 4,000 joules per kilogram, almost four times what you need for severe weather. Uh, we also have another trough coming in from the Pacific Northwest, moving through the Northern Plains and into the portions of the uh, Western Midwest here as we head through the day today. A little bit here of a strong belt of, uh, you know, mid-level winds coming in out of the South and West, and that will help enhance that kind of wind shear across the middle of the country into the Midwestern regions and Northern Plains as we head through the day today. Also kind of a stronger belt of some mid-level winds coming more out of the Northwest here, feeding into a uh, kind of an overnight complex continuation across portions of the mid-Atlantic pushing off here today, uh, you know, offshore into the Atlantic Basin here during the morning and afternoon today as well. And you can see that clearly during the afternoon hours, mid to late afternoon, you can see that continuation of that MCS cluster here, mesoscale convective system type of complex of storms that will continue to kind of shift off the uh, Virginia coast there around the Virginia beach area. And then kind of a waiting game across the middle of the country here as we have a very strong capping inversion, uh, which means there's not a lot of a uh, 
rising air because there is a warm layer aloft during the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere preventing those tall thunderstorm updrafts but once we breach that cap and break it here during the you know the peak heating of the day towards you know very late this afternoon and into the early and mid evening hours we'll have some supercell thunderstorms developing from Iowa back into portions of eastern Nebraska a couple storms developing into South Dakota here as well along that front and these will kind of move parallel to the front to the north uh, you know along that cold front to the north and east and that will stall the front across portions here of the Midwest, where you have a complex of storms developing overnight here with some damaging wind potential, some large hail, some heavy rainfall, and yes, a lot of lightning with all that energy in the uh, the atmosphere. That'll be kind of moving through southeastern Minnesota, northern and northeastern Iowa, into Wisconsin here as well. Got to still watch some storm activity up here in the portions of eastern North Dakota and the northwestern portions of Minnesota. That's more of a conditional risk here um, as we head through the day here uh, on Tuesday. Then as we head into Wednesday, a little bit more of a significant risk once again here, but a little different location here. We have a an upgrade from the Storm Prediction Center and their overnight upgrade here. Uh, their SPC update at uh, their day two outlook shows an enhanced risk of severe weather from the UP of Michigan all the way down through central and northern Wisconsin and then getting into southeastern portions there in Minnesota, northeastern Iowa, with a slight risk extending from portions of the upper peninsula of Michigan through eastern and southern Wisconsin, far northern Illinois, and then the east central portions there of Iowa, including the Des Moines area up toward Dubuque, Iowa, and then even portions of Green Bay here as well. And then that marginal risk surrounding that down toward portions of Kansas City, getting in toward the Topeka, Wichita areas, and then toward the Davenport Quad Cities. And then even toward portions here of the east, you know, from the portions of the interior New England, all the way down through the mid-Atlantic and into the southeast, we have a marginal risk of severe weather on your Wednesday as well. Regarding the threats here on Wednesday, a 30% wind risk across that enhanced risk area, the slight risk area of 15% wind risk, and then those 5% wind risks here uh, general wind risk across that marginal risk zone. The hail risk zone, kind of the same thing, except in that 30% and some of that 15% area across the Midwest here from Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, getting in towards central and northeastern Iowa, there is actually a, a, a 15 to 30% hatched hail risk, which means in this black hatched area, there could be two inch or larger, uh, you know, hailstones. And we've been seeing a lot of this where we have two inch or larger uh, hatched areas this year where we've had three to even even four inch hailstones. So that is a possibility as we head through Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, into northern and northeastern Iowa, and even central Iowa as we head in towards the Wednesday afternoon and evening time frame. Also of note as well, there is a 10% uh, hatched tornado risk zone. This does mean there's a significant chance for tornadoes and along with that here a significant tornado or two is possible in this hatch zone where you see the black outline here with the kind of the uh, dashes that does mean EF2 to even EF5 strength type tornadoes are possible across the upper peninsula of Michigan especially through central and northwestern uh, portions there of Wisconsin, southeastern portions there of Minnesota and a far northeast Iowa. This is, does include the Wisconsin Dells area toward La Crosse, Wisconsin, Rochester, Minnesota, and then moving up toward the north here towards northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. You got that 5% tornado risk extending down toward Des Moines, Dubuque, Iowa, getting up toward Green Bay, and then that 2% area getting all the way down towards Kansas City uh, in the Wichita and Topeka areas as well, and the Davenport Quad Cities here as we head into your Wednesday. And kind of looking at the setup for Wednesday, you have the upper level jet stream here pushing in here from the west. You got that trough here with that upper level low spinning across the southern Canadian prairies. And ahead of that, you got a kind of a little bit of a tilt in that jet stream. And ahead of that, you know, tilt, there's going to be a lot of unstable environment kind of setting up across the Midwest. And that's where you got a lot of that wind shear, a lot of that cape or instability here for some thunderstorms to really start to fire off as we head into Wednesday afternoon and evening. With that cold front as well, you got a lot of lift, you got a lot of conversion along that front. So ahead of that front, you have some very strong warming temperatures well into the 90s again in the Chicagoland area, pushing 95 here as we head to late Wednesday afternoon. Some lower 100s possible across portions of southern Indiana, southwestern portions there of uh, Ohio. And then just those widespread 90s and 100s here farther to the south. And that will create a lot of instability, especially when combined with all this dew point temperature, you know, the low level moisture here, boundary layer moisture going all the way up into the low to mid 70s, kind of pooling along that cold front. Behind that front, you'll have 40s, 50s degree dew points here, and that will kind of create all the energy. And along this yellow shaded area into the red, you can see 3,000 to nearly 4,000 joule per kilogram instability to work with here as we head in towards that enhanced risk zone. And 
and that is why we have some severe weather. So kind of looking at Wednesday morning, we got an ongoing complex of storms here moving through southeastern Minnesota, northern and northeastern Iowa, and to central Wisconsin. But as we head towards the afternoon, maybe an ongoing area of storms. And this is kind of a, a little bit of a wild card. Whether or not the atmosphere destabilizes or gets worked over here during the morning hours with the morning storms will definitely determine the afternoon and evening kind of risk. If that does not happen, this area might start shifting a little farther to the east because these storms post-frontal might actually push that cold front a little farther to the east and that threat may be a little farther to the east-southeast as well. So that is something to monitor as we head through the day on Wednesday. Nonetheless, though, we do have a cold front pushing through eastern Iowa into portions of central Wisconsin down through the central plains here as we head toward the late afternoon, early evening hours. And then, boom, you have another squall line pushing through with some strong damaging winds, some large hail, and maybe a spin-up tornado across portions here of upper, Mich uh, upper Great Lakes and the upper Michigan there pushing through southern and southeastern Wisconsin, maybe getting into northwestern Illinois and then tailing its way down into northern Missouri as well with some strong damaging winds and especially that heavy rain threat as we get into later and later into the overnight hours before those storms fall apart. Zooming in now, the, uh, this is the high resolution kind of uh, model depiction of what the supercell composite looks like. And when any storms move into this environment in the yellows, the oranges, the, you know, the reds, the pinks, this is where you can have a favorable environment for those rotating thunderstorms especially in that enhanced risk zone across portions of central Wisconsin, getting down here into northeastern Iowa. And you also have some significant tornado parameter here showing up across those areas as well. So some strong, you know, strong long track tornadoes cannot be ruled out with those, you know, EF2 up to EF5 strength tornadoes, definitely not out of the question across Wisconsin and in northeast Iowa, far southeast Minnesota as we head in towards that Wednesday afternoon, especially late afternoon and then getting into the mid and late evening hours. So that will be something to watch. Watch. But just generally over the next two days, going through Tuesday and Wednesday here, so today into our Wednesday and into early Thursday morning, you can expect some rainfall across the you know portions of southwestern and southern Ontario, all the way through the upper peninsula of Michigan, through central northern Wisconsin, southeastern portions of Minnesota, getting down through Iowa and into the central plains. You can expect here upwards of an inch of rain uh, focused across those areas, while well, some more rainfall is expected across portions of the southeast up through the mid-Atlantic. A little bit of a quieter weather here, uh, which is some welcome news, I'm sure, for the uh, folks up there in the Pacific Northwest uh, with a relentless, you know, wet pattern across those areas. Maybe some drier weather potentially here as we head through the rest of the week with the active weather pushing into portions of the southern uh, Canadian prairies with that upper level low spinning here uh, with that. And that is associated with that cold front as we head through the middle of the week. Now, as we push into Thursday, this system will start to broaden out a little more. The jet stream won't have as big of a dip in it, but still showing a notable shortwave trough pushing across southeastern Canada. And ahead of that, where that jet stream here pushes to the east across portions of the New England region into portions of the eastern Ohio Valley, that's where we could have some severe weather as we head into Thursday afternoon. Uh, we could we have a lot of warmth continuing across the south central plains. You know, Texas still reaching around 100 degrees into the lower hundreds, even into Oklahoma southern Kansas and then stretching eastward here into the Tennessee Valley in the southeast and just to the northeast of that on the northeastern periphery that's where we could have that severe weather as we head into Thursday we got all those dew points once again rising well into the 70s you got the instability values growing 3,000 plus joules per kilogram here especially along interior New England into the eastern portions there of the uh, Ohio Valley and that's where we could see some thunderstorms on Thursday afternoon so Thursday late afternoon we got a little bit of a line of storms moving through Quebec and Ontario and then down towards portions here of, you know, the the western New York area, and this will start to blow up with some thunderstorms towards portions of northwestern Pennsylvania, western New York State as we head toward the evening hours, and they'll kind of shift across New England here during the, uh, you know, the evening into the overnight hours here. Maybe some strong weather here, a little bit more of a scattered coverage of storms, and that's where we could have some supercells, maybe a couple tornadoes across this zone, across New York State and down and towards Pennsylvania, maybe getting up toward Vermont, New Hampshire with time, and then pushing east towards, you know, New Jersey, western Massachusetts, Western Connecticut, so those areas do be on high alert as you head in towards the overnight hours on Wednesday and or uh, Thursday into Friday. Looking longer range, the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. This goes from Father's Day, June 19th, all the way through the 23rd time frame. 
and this showing a almost a likelihood to even a certainty of above normal temperatures here, uh, you know, 80 to 90 to even a 90 and even a 100 percent chance above normal across, uh, you know, centered on portions of the central and northern plains, getting down through the southern plains and the deep south here and into portions of the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the southeast, where that trough will continue into southeastern Canada and push towards the northeast. We'll have cooler than normal temperatures and then another trough will be digging down here in the west coast and the Pacific Northwest uh, behind this trough or behind Behind this ridge, and that will here, uh, you know, have you know below normal temperatures favored across the your uh, time frame from June 19th for through the uh, 23rd. And then underneath that ridge, not expecting a lot of, you know, rainfall, a lot of suppression, a lot of, you know, sinking air. You're not going to have a lot of rising air. So once again, a likely below normal precipitation here, greater than, you know, 50-50 shot of below normal precipitation. Still got to watch the northern edge here for some storms. Also, that monsoon season will continue to get together across the Four Corners region with some 50-50 shot of above normal precipitation there. And then also up into the Pacific Northwest with some more rainfall across the Idaho area, eastern Washington, northeastern uh, Oregon getting into western uh, portions of Montana uh, likely above normal precipitation there as well going through the 23rd of the month of June. And like I said, with that heat wave, you're heading into Friday afternoon. We got that ridge starting to reestablish itself across the middle of the country. That will only amplify even further as we head into Saturday. And then Father's Day itself on Sunday, that ridge moves all the way up into central and southern Canada here with a very strong jet on the eastern side. So we'll have to watch some storm activity into the northeast and the mid Atlantic. And then that trough will be meandering across the Pacific Northwest. But in between, that's where we have all those 90s, 100s here, all the way up into portions toward the international border between you know, Minnesota, North Dakota, and portions of Wisconsin there, and into, you know, Canada, a lot of warm and hot temperatures expected. And this is your temperatures here as we head into Friday, June 17th. You can expect a lot of 90s all the way up into South Dakota, the Northern Plains, the Midwest. South of there, we can have lower 100s again through widespread through Texas, up through Oklahoma into portions of Western Kansas, Southwestern Nebraska. You got some hundreds expected across the Southeast, and that will only amplify further as we head towards Saturday. We got upper 90s to near 100 all the way up into southern Canada here. We got some widespread lower 100s across the central and southern plains and then those continue to just amplify further. We got 102 all the way up here toward Minot. I mean this is pretty impressive here. We got Minot uh, you know areas producing 102 temperatures here on Father's Day. We got portions of North, uh, South Dakota as well getting into Nebraska. So very hot Father's Day expected across much of the country especially if you live in the northern plains, the central plains, the southern plains or the Midwest or even the southeast, a lot of warm and hot temperatures. So do stay hydrated through this Father's Day weekend and do remain in shaded areas or air conditioned here if you can. And this even as we head after Father's Day into the you know the next week towards the June 20th time frame, this will expand further, more widespread 90s and 100s expected as we head toward that time frame as well. And like I said, underneath that ridge, not a lot of you know rising air, so you have that likely below normal precipitation here in this yellow. That means drier than normal uh, precipitation drier than normal weather expected. You got the very active northern stream jet across portions of the southern Canadian prairies and then diving down across the upper Great Lakes toward the northeast. A little bit of some active weather across the western and central Gulf I'll talk about here in a minute as well as we have some precipitation anomalies above average there towards that you know June 20th time frame. And then here as we head toward the very final days of June and towards the July 1st time frame we have that the northern and northeastern edge of that ridge starting to break down and where you see above normal Normal precipitation again you always got to be worried about more derecho more windstorm type of potential here with all that heat and energy um, the heat and energy has to go somewhere so we'll definitely have to watch that for more complexes of storms toward the end of June and also here noting that there is above normal precipitation here favored still across the coastal Texas getting into southern southeastern Texas into the Louisiana coast as well as well as down toward Mexico a lot of uh, you know uh, above normal uh, precipitation expected through those areas as well and looking at the tropics now, we have still some warm waters across the Gulf of Mexico getting into the Atlantic Basin, still some warm waters across parts of the uh, Eastern Pacific Basin as well. So that could fuel some, you know, storms if they you know, do get going across these areas. And we are actually, this National uh, Hurricane Center is actually watching a storm that could has between a 40 and 60% chance of development here within the next five days across portions here 
of just south of the southern Gulf here into the open waters here just east of Central America here moving to the northwest here with time through the next five days so that will be something to monitor that could play a big role in those above normal precipitation anomalies favored across coastal Texas and Louisiana nothing to panic about but something to watch here over the next few days also very active over in the eastern Pacific Basin here as well where we have a, a 40 percent chance or less of a storm within the next you know five days across portions here of Central America right off the south uh, southern Mexican coast there, hugging the coast, and then we got a you know a greater than a 60% chance or greater uh, of becoming a, a system, a named system across portions of the eastern Pacific Basin, just southwest there of Mexico, um, pushing to the northwest here in the next five days as well. So very active, watching three different areas, one here just south of the Gulf, and then two here in the Atlantic Basin, so that will be something to watch over the next week or so. And kind of going through a little bit of some uh, climatology with this, usually the hurricane season and tropical storm season peaks as we head towards the middle and late summer especially into the fall that's where we have the most tropical systems and the most hurricanes across the Atlantic Basin and then into the Pacific Basin pretty active really from start to finish here from June all the way through pretty steady through you know July August September kind of starting to wane toward October so very a lot of you know active months across these areas are definitely expected in the Atlantic Basin and the Eastern Pacific Basin here as we move forward and kind of looking here through this June 11th and then towards the Father's Day and the day after time frame through the 20th of June these are kind of the original uh, the origin uh, you know origin points of where these storms could kind of form um, and have formed in recent years from you know from 1851 to 2015 kind of hugging close to the you know the the, you know, the land areas across the Gulf, off the coast here, the Carolinas, off Florida's coast, the Central America coast on either side here the, of the Pacific Basin or portions of the Gulf here and, and you know, the eastern portions there of the Pacific. And then kind of the same thing across from June 21st through the end of June, still kind of hugging close to land here, not seeing a lot of, you know, or, or, you know origins across, the, you know, the Central Atlantic or coming off Africa here or anything like that. There is one that is way back here across portions portions of the, you know, wells into the Central Atlantic and towards the Caribbean here and kind of move towards portions of the Gulf. Uh, but that is more rare than not here. Most of these here, even toward the end of June, kind of originate here across, you know, you know, open water, but very close to land. So that is something to monitor as well. So thank you for watching my video. I know it's a lot to get to yet again. Do be safe with all that severe weather and all that heat out there uh, for Father's Day weekend and this week coming up and even into next week as well. And uh, we'll, I'll continue to watch the tropics for you. Do be sure to like my video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions below. I'll be able to answer those. And do please remember to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to hit a goal of 200 here by the end of June or even by Father's Day. So please, please help me out. I do appreciate that very much. And I hope everybody has a great Tuesday out there and the great rest of their week. And if you can't see me here between now and then, Father's Day, I hope you have a great Father's Day as well. Thank you, everybody, and have a great Tuesday.